This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's a thought. If you could stop the entire universe in its exact position and direction in a single moment, and then from that freeze frame, if you could comprehend all of the actions thus suspended, the placement and velocity of every atom in existence, then with a big enough computer and the correct formula, you could predict the future of the entire universe. Literally every movement of everything, from the sea to the clouds to the tectonic plates on every planet that exists every step taken by every creature who will ever live, every word said by every person in physical space. That formula must exist because basically everything that happens in the universe is just physics cope. This is a theory called Laplace's demon because it was the early 1800s and Simon Pierre Laplace didn't know what a computer was and so he had a demon comprehending the position of every atom and doing the maths instead which is obviously way cooler. But what Laplace is doing here is using Newtonian laws of motion to describe describe a deterministic future, or more simply and slightly more romantically, destiny. The future is already decided and it can't be changed. Everything that happens is fate. And that's a concept of time that we have seen in philosophical thinking and literature throughout human history. The future is fixed. We cannot escape it. This is a timeline governed by determinism. And in many ways, you could say that the WOW universe is deterministic too, but with one very important difference. On Azeroth, it's not Newtonian physics ensuring that everything follows its true, unwavering, perfectly predictable path. It's the Titans. As protectors of the true timeline, a responsibility that they passed on to the Bronze Dragon flight, who in turn, when they lost their power in the fall of Deathwing, passed it on to us, the ever helpful player character. We are the external force acting upon all of history in the Titan's name and to the Titan's direction, ensuring that events happen in our timeline as they should, as it has been decided they will, as they must at any cost, because if things didn't happen exactly as the Titan's true timeline required, well, that would be really bad, okay? I mean, you must understand that would be really bad yes, like the worst. And obviously the reason it would be so bad is because... Uh... Well look, Amonthul says so, okay? And he's got a massive beard, which means he knows his shit, okay? Are you seriously gonna doubt a beard this big? Laplace doesn't even have a beard, the absolute loser. You can trust this guy, I'm certain of it. But there has been a development in Dragonflight, a reveal, an accusation that looks like throwing all of that on its head, of recontextualizing the true timeline as something completely unnatural and enforced to the detriment of the universe, to the extent that it may be time to ask, is it time to break the true timeline ourselves? <laughs> One of the best features of the previous patch in Dragonflight, Fractures in Time 10.15, was getting to see the work of the day-to-day -day upkeep of the timeline in action, as we take part in Time Rift events and Chromie's Eons Fringe dailies. And it's interesting for us to look at here because it gives us an insightful glimpse into what maintaining the true timeline actually involves. Now this stuff is your timeline maintenance 9 to 5, the grunt work of the Bronze Dragonflight, and you obviously, and these Time Janitor quests fit into a few different categories of time travel that I think we, as sophisticated sci-fi and fantasy consumers, can all recognize. The first is what I would refer to as the Chromieverse adventure quests. They're silly, they're fun, there's no real consequence to any of them beyond the immediate and the personal. Prince Anduin has lost his lucky Hearthstone card and won't go back to his own timeline without it. <laughs> Lol. Nathanos is here and he hates ducks, like really hates them. Lamau. Chromie and Soridormi want to go adventuring together for a bit, so you're in charge of giving out quests now, just like that other quest in Cataclysm, that one that everyone likes. Grof. Team up with you, but from a universe where you joined the other faction and take on a fell you. These quests are all time travel as delightful fun, and actually is barely even time travel at all, focusing more on the alternate timeline aspect of time rifts. The bad timelines that aren't even the true timelines, f*** those timelines. It's basically the Chromieverse, like the time rifts themselves, where we see the same sort of things. Eternal conflict varies 
Valerian Rin, Lich King Land, etc. It's apparently okay for these other non-true timeline timelines to exist. They're only a problem if they start to influence the true timeline, which is our timeline for some reason. There's one singular time rift quest that I would class a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure quest, where multiple versions of the same character, all from our true timeline, appear in one place at one time, and our current version of that character gets to help and learn from those past versions of himself. In this quest, it's Rathian. There are loads of Rathians. Wild Rathians rule, be excellent to each other, my Rathian dudes. There's a whole other bunch of quests which I'm going to call the Quantum Leap quests, which are much more focused on keeping our own true timeline neat and tidy, putting right things which have gone wrong to make sure it adheres to its strict script. And the reason I call these quantum leap quests is because in these examples, we are making nice changes, the kind of things you'd want to make sure happen. So best of all, I think, we rescue an orphaned bear cub and take her back through time to make sure her intended meeting with Rexar happens, facilitating one of the best team-ups in WoW history, the exact sort of feel-good story that you probably picture when you think of maintaining timeways. Ziggy would be proud. We make sure that Malfurion and Tyrande get together as they should after a time anomaly puts Illidan in possession of some of Malfurion's poetry, which he claims for his own and almost melts Tyrande's heart instead. Don't mention it, Malfi, all in a day's work. Vol'jin has lost his mojo! Here it is! There's a cat in Naxxramas who needs to be kept entertained so that she doesn't become the most evil creature in history. I can relate. Don't worry about it. Milhouse Manor Storm is at risk of not getting with Millicent if we don't act as his wingman and help his game. This is a nice thing, okay? They're cute. This is a nice thing. We need to go back to Lordaeron and replace some rocks that have gone missing to make sure that Invincible slips on them, totally doesn't live up to his name, and dies, setting in motion a series of events that will eventually lead to Arthas massacring an entire city and continent on his way to becoming the Lich King where he'll kill loads more people. And like, yeah. Whew. Just think, if we hadn't put those rocks there, potentially millions of people wouldn't have died the violent, painful, and terrifying deaths that they are supposed to. That would have been, um, terrible? Hang on, this isn't a quantum leap quest. I'm not putting right bad stuff that happened and making people's lives better. I'm ensuring loads of terrible shit happens because Nosdormu says it's the right thing to do. And that's not the same thing at all, is it? Now, to be clear, I think this is a brilliant quest. It's the first time out of all of these quests that you stop and think, ah, oh, Oh, hang on, it's not all fun and games, this time gardening thing, is it? It's a glimpse at the unsavory, but ultimately vital, darker side of the bronze dragon flight. And this Arthur's example hits the exact right note for a quest like this, in my opinion. It's what I would call a Father's Day quest. Named after the Doctor Who episode, Rose goes back to the day her father is killed and saves his life, resulting in the timeways breaking down and beautiful, stunning CGI beasts to appear and start eating everyone until they are put right, which means the death of Rose's father. It's a beautiful episode which makes us understand that time travel can be heartbreaking and that allowing bad things to happen isn't just an uncomfortable necessity sometimes, but can ultimately ultimately be incredibly noble. Pete realizes that his escape from death has caused immense damage and takes agency in making the decision to put it right. It's just brilliant. Please watch it. Actually, in the patch after all of these Eon's Fringe quests, 10.17, Fury Incarnate, we have a great example of a Father's Day quest in the form of the No Limits questline, in which our new Infinite Dragonflight buddy, Eternus, is determined to go back in time to prevent the death of her sister, Morai Dormi, at the hands of Vexemia in the ruins of Uldum. At the suggestion of Chromi, Nosdormu allows this and even facilitates her rewinding events multiple times when each successive attempt to save Morai Dormi proves unsuccessful. And over the course of so many attempts, we start to understand that the reason we are unable to save Morai Dormi is because she is choosing to lay down her life to Vexemia to distract her and protect the many bronze dragon eggs in that part of the ruins. Thanks to Morai Dormi's sacrifice, first one whelp and then the entire brood survive and the future of the bronze dragonflight itself is secured. Eternus learns her lesson that interfering with the timeline and saving her sister would not only doom the whelps, but go against Morai Dormi's own wishes, robbing her sister of agency in the moment of her death. The moral of the story being summed up by Nosdormu before the questline even starts. Sometimes, moments in time must stay as they are for reasons that are not readily apparent. 
And that is great and understandable in the case of the Eternus quest line. But when you think about it, that whole deal does kind of depend on one very important factor. Can we trust that the reason is actually Goods. We assume that Arthas needs to become the Lich King and murder tens of thousands of people for some eventual greater good, like Morai Dormu's death saving the whelps, but on an appropriately grander, more important scale. But what if the reason all that death and suffering is not just allowed by the Bronze Dragon Flight, but protected and preserved at any cost is, say, just because it benefits the Titans somehow? Because that would be some absolute bullshit right there, wouldn't it? Hey, internet, are you ready for some absolute bullshit? At the end of the Dawn of the Infinite's Mega Dungeon, we encounter a triumphant Eridicron who says this. Tell me, little one, have you ever questioned why the Titans preserve this timeline? Your faith means nothing to them. All they wanted was our world. And yeah, I know he's a baddie. Baddies probably shouldn't be trusted. I know. But... I mean, he brings up an interesting point, doesn't he? Like, why is our timeline the true timeline anyway? Because the Titans say so, for sure. But how did they decide that? I guess I've never really thought about it before, but what if Eridicron is right. And the only reason ours is the true timeline is because it's the one where Azeroth has a Titan world soul. What if that's it? Nothing more meaningful or noble or big cosmic plan-y or this is just the way it's gotta be than it being the one that fits the Titan's objectives the most. Like what if this timeline isn't being preserved because it needs to be to secure the eventual triumph of good over evil or life over death or hold together the fabric of time or the universe itself or any other reason that we might agree is important but just because the Titans really like world souls and this Azeroth in this timeline is the most powerful one they found. So it is de facto the true timeline that they protect. Honestly, now I think about it, it seems pretty likely. And I wouldn't say I even blame them especially, but if that is really true, we need to seriously reassess our own relationship to this timeline. The Titans do not care about us any more than you would care about some ants living at the end of your garden. They never have. They might owe us a solid now for rescuing them from Antorus in Legion, but we as life forms are essentially completely in significant to them. And if we are the true timeline, just because Armin Thule has chosen it instead of any bigger reason, it's not because he values or wants to protect us. It is only to do with that world soul, with it being born and with it being on their side. So I guess my question is, why do millions of people have to die for that. Why do we have to make sure that bad things happen for that? Because in that context, suddenly making sure Arthas happens and murders millions of people isn't a Father's Day quest at all. The very fabric and stability of the universe doesn't depend on all that death and horror. It's just what needs to happen for these guys to get their Titan world soul born. It's more like a Biff in Back to the Future 2 quest, manipulating time in an incredibly selfish way purely for your own personal benefit and any bad shit that happens to anyone else doesn't really matter in your eyes. And in that context, I don't know, maybe I don't really want to help Arthas happen? To actively intervene, to make sure a bad thing happens, to ensure an even worse thing happens, to guarantee loads of the actual worst stuff ever happening so that a Titan can be born? Clearly, for the Titans, protecting the true timeline version of events is not the same as protecting us. So here's a question. Is this just me, and I hope you thinking this now, starting to doubt the real world importance of the true timeline? Or is it something the game wants us to think? Because if this feeling of disillusionment at the timeline is intended on Blizzard's part, then it suddenly makes the potential future story direction here very interesting in Indeed, doesn't it? On the one hand, sure, the Eternus quest lines in 10.17 would certainly seem to be Blizz showing us how important it is to accept bad things that happen because to change them often makes things worse. This scenario definitely works as a defense of the true timeline. But there's a difference between accepting bad things happening and causing them, isn't there? And actually, it's worth pointing out that at the end of this quest, Nosdormu kind of agrees with Eternus, or at least a little bit. He accepts that the Bronze Dragon flight have lost sight of the fact that some events are worth changing because our hearts wish it so. 
On that, I agree with the infinites. Which is a hell of a thing to just throw out there, you know? And to be honest, I don't think this is what's happening here, okay? But it could be read as Nosdormu's first real moment of his journey towards becoming Murazon. Like, oh yeah, actually, you're right, Infinite Dragon Lady. We should just change shit sometimes if it makes things better. The possibilities are infinite. I don't think it is that, but it could be. Dragonflight has certainly gone out of its way to constantly show us that the Titans aren't the perfect malevolent beings many would have us believe. They're just another life form that exists in the universe looking out for themselves at the end of the day. Sometimes that is going to align with our interests, but sometimes it won't. I would argue Alex Straza herself is starting to show signs that even she is starting to realize this. In 10.2, she has invited Virenoth into the fold as a trusted ally, and she must know that even if everyone's favorite icy girl is willing to fight alongside the dragons against Firak, it certainly doesn't mean that she's on board with the Titans calling the shots. Virenoth hates them for reasons Alex Straza agrees with, and which looks like they're going to be explored more in the upcoming novel. And if it were to come down to a choice between them or Viranoth in the future, I honestly think Alex Straza would choose her sister this time. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's me, your resident Baldur's Gate junkie. Yes, we are still on our first co-op playthrough and no, the end is nowhere in sight. I can't lie, there are times when I've considered detonating the orb just to, you know, but you know what always walks me back from the ledge? thinking about my beautiful, indestructible Squarespace site. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video, by the way. Honestly, nothing makes me want to press on more than a shiny website at the ready. In fact, it's inspired me to freshen things up around the place. Want to refresh your header? A brand new look is just a click away with Squarespace's amazingly simple editor. Need to feature some new content? Video and even streaming integrations make that a breeze, showcasing all your finest work and triumphant and RPG stratagems. And of course, every page is changeable, customizable, and really good looking to boot, thanks to Squarespace's beautiful template library. You know, I've been meaning to make some edits to our support page for ages. Right now, it's all sub to our Twitch, join our Patreon, buy our merch, la di da but I thought I'd update it with how you could really help us out these days. Seriously though, do buy our merch. That should do it. Have you been busy pondering your orb and decided to give it a go? Set up your own website with a few simple clicks and a free trial on Squarespace. And when you're ready to go live, go to squarespace.com slash Evatel or use code TallyessandEvatel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash Evatel. Anyway, that's the ad integration. That was really good, wasn't it? All done. Borders Gate 3? Yeah. There's also that mysterious spell name that popped up in the 10.2 data that has everyone talking. At slide spoilers for potential Dragonflight stuff here, but the Great Dragons describes Alex Straza, Kalagos, Abyssian, Nosdormu, Marithra, and Viranoth receiving the blessing of Amirdrasil, the new world tree, which is super interesting because it looks like Viranoth will become an aspect in her own right, presumably the primal aspect. Doesn't sound like something the Titans would love. And also because traditionally it has been the Dragonflights who have blessed world trees with Titan power. So to have them receiving the blessing this time instead from a tree that was grown from a seed that was created in Ardenweald and empowered by a loon. Well, okay, we still don't know much about a loon, but it could potentially signal the dragons taking another step away from the influence of their titan masters, especially if Viranoth is getting involved too. If this were a big titan thing like previous blessings, I don't think Viranoth would be getting involved. This is all certainly very interesting, but we currently know so little about it. It seems silly to speculate on it anymore at this stage, so let me finish on this. Perhaps the most important detail in all of the Chromie Arthas quest is actually how the stones that Invincibles slip on go missing in the first place, or rather, who makes them go missing. Because while it's implied that the infinite dragonflight is behind most of the time fractures we encounter in 10.15, this particular quest makes a note of mentioning that the rocks were taken by some bronze whelplings. We had some well-meaning whelps take a few teeny objects from history, small things can sometimes have a big impact. While the whelps are doing double chores, I need someone to return these rocks to their proper place. I know, right? Rocks. But they have to go back. It implies that these young members of the Bronze Dragonflight believed Invincible didn't absolutely have to die, and that by extension, Arthas didn't have to become the Lich King 
actually. And while it's easy to dismiss them as young and therefore wrong, something I notice I do more and more as I get older, it's worth remembering that dragon whelplings are not necessarily quite as immature as, say, human children. Consider what Rathian was like when he was newly hatched. Not to mention the bronze dragons in general have a more complicated existence than most. They can often be old and young, like Jimmy Cranky, from the future and the past, all at the same time. Something that's illustrated when dealing with the bronze hatchling during 10.15's Little Scales daycare quests. All I'm saying is, were the whelplings wrong? Could they have had a point? If even the new generation of bronze dragons think the true timeline is bullshit, should we think it's bullshit? Because here's the thing about Laplace's demon and a deterministic universe. It's not true. It doesn't work. It has since been contradicted by thermodynamics and chaos theory and quantum mechanical irreversibility. Fate is not enforced on us by Newtonianism in the real world, and it doesn't have to be forced on us by the Titans in Azeroth. The true timeline is only true because this beardy dickhead says it is, and then we make it so by changing things to fit. It turns out we don't actually have to. It feels to me like we could be building up to one of the biggest shifts in WoW lore of all time. One where we cut loose from the Titans and their true timeline. One where we are free to live a future on its own, unknown terms, rather than one that's been prescribed by a so-called higher power that doesn't care about us, but what's inside our planet. One where we forge our own path rather than walk one built for us. And yeah, maybe Iridacron was just doing bad guy talk, trying to distract us. Or maybe he has given us the most important realization we will ever have. And if you excuse me, I'm off to find those bronze whelplings and sign up. But what do you think? Is our timeline really one that needs to be preserved no matter the cost because all of existence depends on it? Or did Iridicron feed us a seed of truth? What should we do about it? I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. And thanks for joining us today. If you like this video, don't thank us. Thank our friend and Wowhead contributor Discordian Kitty who co-wrote this episode with us and our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our work happen. And legitimately, guys, thank you because without you, you, there'd be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evertel. If you didn't like this video, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is the Lost Codex. No, my name is Taliesin. From me and Evertel and the Bronze Welplings too. Until next time.